We're going to take a look at using the abrasive chop saw over in the Tyler Metal Shop. This is going to be a tool used for cutting down steel bar stock, ferrous based bar stock. You're going to want to make sure that you are wearing a face shield. So we have a face shield handy right there. Um, as well as some other safety gear you're going to want to make sure that you have on hand. Um, we've got a face shield and I recommend wearing a face shield in addition to safety glasses underneath there. Lots of sparks get thrown around and they can bounce in up behind the face shield uh, so double up that safety protection. Uh, another thing you're going to want to do is probably protect your arms uh, from some of that uh, those sparks and the, uh, the hot debris. So we've got one of these um, fire resistant, not fireproof, fire resistant cotton uh, welding jackets that you can grab in the um, tool lockup. So I've already got mine on. Um, another thing you're going to want to note is that this thing gets really loud. So I've got a set of over the ear muffs here for hearing protection. You could wear some uh, earplugs as well. That'd be fine. So I'm going to set those aside for the moment. And uh, things get sharp, things get hot. Uh, some people want to protect their hands from the sparks. So gloves, uh, work gloves. Uh, I've got a set of you know, chunky welding gloves here. It's fine. Uh, these are optional, but you can also wear some gloves when you're working on this machine. You set those down there. Now let's uh, talk about what kind of material to actually cut. What, what's a good material to cut on this saw? So I've got a few different pieces of uh, bar stock here. Tube is fine, angle is fine, uh, square and round bar are all fine as long as they fit inside this clamp here safely. Uh, one thing you're going to want to make sure um, about is that you're actually cutting steel and not something like this. This is aluminum and uh, it's about a third the weight of steel. It's really light. You notice that it doesn't have any kind of rust on it and it's um, it's not magnetic. So steel, as you can see, a magnet will attract, uh, but aluminum it doesn't. So that's another good trick for identifying aluminum. So no aluminum on the abrasive chop saw. Okay, it gums up the abrasive and it will uh, ruin that disc, that cutting disc. So no aluminum on the chop saw. Um, set that guy aside for now. So let's talk about um, Potentially, you might have some light bar stock, and a lot of times people cutting uh, a lot of real thin diameter stuff down will wear out the blade really quickly uh, or put it through a lot more abuse than is necessary. You can use, and it's a, it's a good trick, to potentially just use a set of, uh, as an alternative to the chop saw really, uh, a good set of bolt cutters. The bolt cutters work best when you have your light bar stock um, close to the inside jaws there, and uh, if you don't feel like you're strong enough, um, or if you just want to make life easier, you just go up against the floor like this and a quick little snip. And then there you have uh, a nice clean cut uh, using some bolt cutters on light bar stock. That's quarter inch material. You could probably hog through something as thick as a half inch, but uh, that is a good alternative to the chop saw. So with that out of the way, let's take a look at how to hold some material in this clamping system. First thing to uh, notice is that you can open the clamp by uh, flipping that little um, selector around. That's for in open mode and then locked mode, right, for clamping. Uh, so we'll have him out here for the moment. If you're clamping any kind of round or square bar stock, you can easily just uh, slide him in there, give it a clamp, and then you're held securely. That's great. Um, if you're holding something a little more unorthodox, like a piece of angle iron, or you're just making, say, a straight cut, uh, you'll want to hold it like this or like this, depending on the size of your material. Uh, if you find yourself needing to make angled cuts, like, say, uh, one of these miters in angle iron, then you can support your material with another piece of tubing like this. So you might want to ask, how do we angle this saw? I've seen people make angled cuts on it. How is it done, Rob? So right now we've got the um, clamp set to a 90, to cut at a 90. What you do is you loosen this little lever back here. Let's get this 
arm out of the way. And there's some score lines in the, the bed of the table there. For different positions back here, each of those diagonal score lines are a 45 for the different positions this guy is. Basically, you push him down as the blade wears out. You can push the whole thing back. But for right now, we're just pivoting in the same location. Uh, then when you're on your 45 or whatever angle you need, you just tighten that back down. So now you can cut uh, either a piece of tubing on an angle um, or bar stock or whatever you need to do. But right now we're concerned with trying to make one of these angled cuts safely. If we were to try and cut angle iron, right, it might accidentally shift on us, really dangerous. So anytime you want to make a cut on angle iron, nest a piece of tubing in there. Right. You don't have to cut through the tubing too, and then that way, now your part is held in good and secure. It's not going to roll around on you, and it's um, and that's the proper way to cut angled cuts on angle iron. You got to have a piece of tubing. You could even use a, a chunk of wood, but uh, ideally you use some uh, tubing because you see it nests inside the roll of the angle itself, so it doesn't wobble around in there. So that's a great tip for making angled cuts. So let's. Um, set this guy back to 90. There might be a little bit of uh, finesse required to get him back to 90, but there's a mark on the table for 90 as well. You can also do a quick check with a square if you'd like. Um, here's a combo square we can set to make an outside square, bring down our blade, and once we're flush with our blade and at 90 there, we know we're in good good shape. Check again, and yeah, we're still good. So I'm checking the square against the blade, um, and then the blade of the square against that there. Um, so let's talk about actually making a cut, what you're all probably here for, right? Um, so let's take this lighter bar stock, which is probably most common for most learners, beginners. The trick is, anytime you're going to make a cut on this saw, it's not really a trick, it's just more safety uh, as well as good saw maintenance. We got it clamped in there really nice and secure. We didn't totally reef down on the clamp, but what you want to know is that the abrasive material on these saws, this is like a grinding disc, and uh, what it's going to do is it's going to basically grind through your piece of ferrous-based metal. So through your piece of steel. If you were to slam this thing down onto your steel while it's spinning or even when it's just stationary like this, you could uh, chip that wheel, you could crack it, it could shatter and it'll throw at a very high speed uh, chunks of this blade at your, at your face and at you. And that's why we wear that face shield uh, and that's why we always want to, when we're lowering our saw blade down, we want to ease into that part to make contact real gentle and then then we give it a little bit of pressure once it's on there. Other things to note is if you're going to cut through, you know, a piece of tubing or something like that, first you ease it down onto the, um, onto the surface of the tube. It might take a little bit more pressure to get through uh, the top surface of something like a piece of tubing. But then once you get to the walls, it's two little thin pieces and it, you could easily give too much pressure. So you want to ease up on your pressure when you're going through the vertical walls and then you can put a little bit more pressure on it when you're going down through the uh, two other, um, you know, horizontal walls. Let's take a look at what one of these cuts is going to look like. So I'm going to get my face shield and my hearing protection on and then uh, I'll make a quick cut here. And you'll see, you'll see some of the sparks flying, give you a better shot. And remember, you always want to ease down into this part. We'll also have the um, dust collection system on for the metal shop, and that'll keep things uh, from being a little less messy. So face shield down, and then here's hopefully a half decent shot. And into that part. Maybe we'll make a cut in some of this tubing, just to give you a sense of it. So ease into it. Some 
things to note is that the uh, material gets extremely sharp and hot at the end, so you want to be careful uh, when handling this stuff. We do have a little drop-off bucket on the side of the saw here, so anything that is uh, scraps you can toss in that bucket, um, and that's a good way to uh, dispose of things while they're still hot and sharp. And then you also want to make sure that when you are done using this uh, piece of machinery that you sweep up after yourself. One last note here. Um, is if your material is really long, like say this long piece of angle iron, um, you'll find that it's kind of hard to hold it steady on the saw. And so what we have is a roller stand here, and that will allow you to support the long end of your part while you're working on the saw. So use roller stands uh, to help hold the long pieces. And then when you're done, please, 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 always remember to sweep up after yourself and dispose of any scraps uh, over in the um, tool crib. So that is the abrasive shop, shop saw over in the Tyler Metal Shop. Remember to always go gentle on that saw blade. Um, you want to give it a little bit of pressure, but ease down with your contact at first uh, and always work safely. If you're not cleared on any equipment here, make sure that you are done so by your instructor or by the shop technician.